Hello and welcome to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher, the programme that brings you the stories of what God is doing in Israel and the wider Middle East in these days. Itzhak Morchaim is a young Jewish believer with a huge vision. Here he is to share his journey so far. So I believe that what the Lord told us to do is, first of all, prepare David's. Because when you speak about the tabernacle of David, it's a tabernacle of David. So you need people who are totally hungry and thirsty and have the heart that David had, and the hunger to see God, the hunger to experience even the presence of God in their flesh. He sang song about my flesh desires also. We're not afraid of the presence of God. We want to experience in this temple and to experience His face. And I believe that the Lord, according to Psalm 24, He says, lift up your heads, or your gates. He said, lift up your head into heaven. It's like it says in Colossians, it's something like, if you really died in Christ, desire those things which are in heaven. I believe we need to prepare a generation, young people, they like to have the character of David, the hunger and the thirst. They are totally exposed into life. They see that there is nothing here. We need to go into a higher level. When we are hungry to see the face of God. I think there is a mistake in English in the Bible. Many people are saying, we seek the face of God. And then other people are saying, why do you need the face of God? Go preach the gospel. What is this seeking for? And, but you know, when Moses came out after experiencing the power of God and releasing the people of Israel, signs and wonders, taking them to the ocean, going into the mountain, and uh, he said to God, he said, listen, if your face is not going with us, in Hebrew, it's your face. In English, it is your presence. I'm not going to go. And I believe the generation is rising up to say, we want to reach people. We want to preach the gospel, but we want to do it in your level, Yeshua. And if your face is not going to go with us, we are not going to go. We are not going to speak about your name because it's empty. We want to manifest. We want to release them. We want to be ministers of spirit. But you know, speaking about tabernacle, speaking about intercession, music, worship, and all of that, it's not worth anything if you don't have David's inside. So you need to prepare their hearts. We need to lead them and expose them. They already have it inside. We just need to unfail it and, and open it for them to see that they are called to seek the face of God. This is their destiny, to be hungry and thirsty. So God told us, restore the tabernacle, restore the 24-7 worship. David had 288 musicians, 12 musicians in every hour, intercession, worship, prayers, songs of memorial, songs of resistance, songs of praising the name of God, songs of repentance, so many things he did in 24-7. And I believe David had a key. Our name is David's key. And I believe David's key, first of all, it's musical key, you can say, but also it's a key to open the heaven because we want to walk under an open heaven. When you're walking in open heaven, then God is backing you, heaven is backing you, angels can go up and down. We don't want to minister the gospel in a closed heaven. And I believe God is, first of all, restoring David in us, but then he's restoring the prayer, restoring the worship, restoring the music, but educated music, to flow in the Holy Spirit, to have boldness when we're doing the worship. So God is leading us into this kind of restoration. There is a scripture in Timothy that says, first of all, I ask you to pray, intercede, give thanks, for all people, on behalf of the people even. So we are the thanksgiving of our city. They are walking in blindness. We are here standing in a gap for them. And then Rishon Tzion, my city, actually gives thanksgiving to God through us. So we are the priests and the kings in our city. And so we want to lift up thanksgiving and praise the name of God on behalf of our city. Then we can open the heaven of our city and then people can be open for the gospel. There's lots of principles that we can mention now. So God is leading us in this direction. So we believe God is going to bring us 288 musicians, Israelis, born in Israel, Sabras, that are going to minister full time, singing songs, writing songs and worshipping in music. So how far advanced are you in seeing this vision being fulfilled? We, are, we exist only one year in this vision. All the prayers and intercession are still in the houses. We don't have a place of our own yet. We believe that help is going to come from brothers and sisters, from the body, from the family in the world. People will be connected to us and believe in that. So we believe support will come. You know, in the beginning, to be honest, I said to myself, God, just open the heaven and give us everything we need so we won't be dependent on anybody. This is our ambition, not dependent. But then he said, he said something very wisely to us. He says, but if I help you directly, they will not bear fruit. I want them to have fruit. So if they will do that, they in the end times, they will be accounted by helping my people to go back and they will have bear fruit out of that, rewards out of that. So this is why God is doing that transition. And I believe in the beginning, Paul and all the first apostles, they sacrificed to go to the nations, you know, because Paul was the one who said, I would even give up my salvation for my people. But at the same time, he says, I'm called for the Gentiles. 
So this is the time of the Gentiles. But now it's the time that we come back. And we are not going to come back unless the body is going to make a move. Because you can say Yeshua is the head in every generation, but the body is changed in every generation. And Yeshua is trying to communicate his will in every generation as fast as he can because our life is like a one moment we are here, the moment we are gone. So a body that is totally connected to the head, knowing the signs of the times. And I believe the body of Christ right now is dealing with an issue like in Esther. Mordechai came to Esther and he said to her, even though he loved her, he said, listen Esther, God is going to do his will anyway, but you have the chance to be involved in that. Even without you, he's going to do that. And I believe many ministries are now facing this kind of thing. Itzhak, you were sharing over breakfast a few moments ago that there are about 17 of you in your group. You're a small group of people carrying this huge vision. In a few months' time, you're going to be opening a music academy to start training these musicians. At the same time, you feel the Lord has expected you and wanted you and encouraged you to be very sacrificial in your giving to support elderly people living in your city, particularly Holocaust survivors. It sounds like you're being stretched on every front. The Lord talked to us about rise up before the gray hair and uh, give honor in front of their faces. We are young. In Hebrew, it's very clear. When we say glory, these generations will be hungry for the glory of God. But in Hebrew, glory and honor is the same word, kavod. If this generation will be hungry for the glory of God, it has to be hungry for honoring also. And we know that in this scripture in Leviticus, I think he says, honor uh, your father and mother, but he says also, rise up before the gray hair and give honor in front of the faces. I am the Lord your God. And I believe Satan is fighting that kind of a blessing. He's making a distance between the young and the old. Now we need to respect generations before us. We are here because of them. If we will not respect them, something is going to be break in the glory realm for us. We will not have it. And I believe God told us, listen, you have to respect the pioneers of the physical Israel. Those who came here, came out of Europe, everywhere, before the Holocaust, after the Holocaust. They came, nothing was here. They gave up money, they gave up ambitions, they gave up their own vision into one vision, preparing the land for the next generations. And right now, there is a generation totally thinking only on themselves. Just what do I want to do in life? Totally out of the vision of God. Satan is fighting that, but God is trying to heal this generation and give them the right perspective, honoring generations. Honoring your father and mother is not only your physical father and mother. Abraham is our father. So actually, my father is somewhere in the 1400s. I have many fathers, 1300, 1200, and I'm here because of them. And I don't know what they did. It's not written in the Bible. They sacrificed their life. So unless respect is going to come through all those generations, we will not be able to go forward in the fullness of the penance of God. And then God told us, give money for the Holocaust survivors, heal their hearts, give them food. Uh, why don't you manifest your generosity? Not only the generosity of, of believers outside of Israel. You need to be the first one who gives. And then we said, but we have only 600. He said, this is enough. Even one family is enough. We have food in the refrigerator. And I said, okay. We collected 600 shekels and we bought 10 bags. We went to the municipality and we said, give us the 10 poorest old families in Rishon, in our city. They gave us, and then we went to the houses, and our young people came to them and gave them the food and said, we love you, we think about you, we respect everything you did for the land. And the first time we did that, we came home. Everybody was so excited. We sat on around, surrounding the table, preparing for a meeting, and everybody was still crying from this experience, still excited from this experience. And then I said, okay, I took the Bible, and before I opened the Bible, money fell off the Bible. $400 just fell like a rock on the table and everybody was looking at it. it was a miracle and God says to us like yes you shake heaven in this city you know you did something big in this city this is war somebody is fighting for the young people in this city and suddenly you did something totally different and I hope you know we have 2,400 Holocaust old survivors some of them are poor they don't have enough money for medicine air conditioner or food they need to choose all the time what to use money for you know because the government sometimes keep money because they don't want to waste money on old people. They want to keep the money that they had for the Holocaust so they can keep it and invest it in other things. But we are the children of God. We are the ambassadors of heaven. And we can put order in the city. So this is like first food, 10 families only. And uh, we feel so excited and we feel like this is a step that we have to be involved in. Briefly, Itzhak, just to end this interview, can you also just share a little bit about the work that you're doing with Arab believers in the nations surrounding Israel? I believe the relationship between the Jews and the Arabs is very special. You know, Satan is fighting that. And I believe the root of the problem is that the Arabs, the Muslims, they don't call God Father. 
because Ishmael as a son, he was neglected from his father, and then suddenly he has a father issue. They don't call God father, they call him only God. The second thing is they hate the Jews because Ishmael was first one and then all the inheritance went to Isaac. So these two roots are the most issue thing. Now we believe that our job is to go and reach them, is to do a first step of reconciliation, not to wait for them. And praise God for people like Tom Hess, they are doing convocations in Turkey, in Jordan, that actually many believers are coming from all the Arab surrounding nations. And when they come, messages about reconciliation, about the Jews coming back, sometimes difficult messages and Arabs cannot listen to, but sometimes their heart is open and suddenly you see such a love, we dance and we worship together in one room. Many people are coming and we are crying together, worshiping together, and I believe this is an obligation from us to be involved in that twice, three times a year, to go to them, even if it's to Jordan, to take the risk and go there, and to pray together with them, intercede for them, because we believe that in the last move, when the Spirit is going to come from the four corners of the earth to resurrect Israel, the Spirit is going to go through the Arab nations surrounding Israel. Up to now, we have the Islam cursing five times a day Israel, and I believe that the body of Christ is supposed to rise up into an intercession much higher than that, of blessing and prophesying and everything. I believe that to have our eyes open and our ears open to know about the signs of the times is one of the most important things that there is. Daniel, he was in Babylon, he was in captivity. One time he read Jeremiah and he says, wait a minute, 70 years, we have to go back from diaspora after 70 years. And then he was led to pray. And I believe God is now revealing his will through the Bible and through preaching of the Bible through ministers and pastors and leaders speaking in convocation like that, speaking and then it leads them into intercession concerning the end times, and then God is able to perform His will in the end times, and then it's speed and hasten the second coming of the Lord. Itzhak Morchaim, a Jewish believer living in Israel, sharing his story. And you're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher. The Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a Christian charity based in the UK that supports the needs of both Jewish believers and Arab and Palestinian Christians living in Israel and the wider Middle East. If you would like to know more about our work and receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please either visit our website, olivetreefund.org, or write to me, Julia Fisher, at the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, PO Box 850, Horsham, RH12 9GA in the UK. Do join me at the same time next week for another story from the olive tree. Until then, goodbye.